So we're installing a Sunmoto Easy Roof Mount Kit. There's a flashing, there's a footing, as well as a lag bolt, and there's also a standoff. So you can see I've been doing this for a while this morning. About halfway done. Those are the panels on the far side of the house. So we're trying to do that again over here. And you can see there's a specific pattern. So all the ones on the outside are flush with the outside of the roof. And I measured those off. And I've also installed them on the other side of the roof. And then I can use a rail as a ruler across the roof in order to get my heights. As well, they're offset in between the two outsides. So my trusses are at two feet. You can see that the topmost row, second footing is at two feet. And then it's pair on the bottom rail is four feet away from the outside. Then there's two feet, and two feet, so kind of diagonal. So that staggers the weight across the trusses. So now I'm going to start in my third row and we're going to install it just like the top row, two feet away. So I'm going to use a rail in order to get the height between the two end posts. One of them is already in, one of them is waiting over there. And in order to find the truss underneath the roof sheathing, it's not very scientific. You basically have to bang on the roof until it sounds right. Uh, you can get apparently very expensive stud finders uh, that essentially can find the, the studs through the composite roof. But as you might imagine, the layering of the composite roof makes uh, density changes. So a normal stud finder has no chance to be able to find the trusses. You drill a 7 30 seconds pilot for the lag bolt. You have to drill at the right place. Uh, and like I said, basically you just bang on the roof until you figure out where it is. So right above there is where the last one was. And in fact, I've noticed while installing on my roof that my trusses don't run all the way from the ridge line all the way to the gutter. They only run about halfway. And then another piece is basically uh, blocked beside it and runs for the rest of the way of the house. So my posts tend to have three or four in a row and then they're shifted by a couple of inches uh, and then they go for all the way down to the gutter. Uh, so you definitely have to look for the studs or the trusses that is underneath the sheathing uh, and make sure that you're hitting them every time. Um, you'll also know because when you drill your pilot, if you're only going through the sheathing, it'll just pop right through after burrowing for about an inch. Uh, so you, you need to be hitting wood for the full inch, inch and a half that you go through there. Uh, I keep a spare drill bit in my pocket in order to uh, just stick it in the hole after and make sure that it's bottoming out on wood. You can also tell by the shavings that are pulled up by the drill that you're hitting real wood. Um, so basically you have to hit on the roof and it makes a different sound. So right here, basically that's the spot right in here. And since this rail is already resting on two other mounts, I'll be able to drill my hole uh, right in here. So without a camera in my hand, I'll bang again and make sure I get my spot correctly. And then I'll drill it in. So when you drill into the roof, you have to be perpendicular to the surface. So don't go in there crooked uh, because your standoffs are going to come out in the same orientation as the drill hole that you've made. You also don't want to go diagonal left to right uh, because your lag bolt might pop through the side of your truss. And uh, if it doesn't have enough thread in the truss, basically, then you're not going to be able to have that. Um, it's not going to hold the shear and it's not going to hold the pull out force that it needs to hold. Uh, it won't be able to do its job. So you can see that I made a little bit of a, a, a divot right here uh, in the composite roofing. That's what I do with the end of my drill, just to make sure I've, once I've found my spot. Um, it, 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 even if you change your mind after, ultimately you're covering it with a really big piece of flashing. Um, so you can actually you know, entirely miss the truss uh, and uh, put another hole one inch to one side or the other until you get it. 
and uh, it, it gets covered up by flashing. Uh, you do have to put some caulking in any, any, any of the extra holes that you've drilled in your roof. Uh, clearly don't turn it into Swiss cheese, but uh, you should be able to uh, do that reasonably well. So when you go to drill, move your rail out of the way so you don't bottom out. And then make sure you're coming at it straight. And go in. So I can tell from how the, the, the drill just popped through there that I missed the truss. So I can tell as well because I can jam a long drill bit right in there and I, I didn't go anywhere near that deep and I'm not finding it. So it's to one side or the other. It's probably going to be on this side here, which means the truss is probably lying in like that. So I'm going to make another hole right there and fill that one in. So try not to do this 500 times on your roof. Uh, but you do get the hang of it and every once in a while you'll miss again the thickness the different thicknesses of the composite on top of the roof can make this um, a little bit of a, a trial and error job so, and I've, got a, and I've got a bit more wood right here So already I've gone about the same depth, and uh, I'm, I, it hasn't bottomed out, so you do have to... And you can see, you can see by the type of uh, filings that come out that you're hitting wood uh, in there. Once you have that in place, the next piece that's going to go on there is this guy here. So that's the mounting piece, and it has to land like that. Now you see how it's being covered up by this other piece of composite shingle. It's going to have to be underneath that. And in fact, when you put the flashing in, you want to make sure, like uh, this piece here, that you don't have any composite shingle up on top of the ridge of the flashing. You don't want water going straight off the shingle and then climbing up onto this bump and then hitting against the edge of this footing here because this is essentially where any um, water could get in. Now there is a washer on the other side, a rubber washer, rubber grommet. You can see it here, this black one, and it seals to the back of the flashing. So when you tighten down the uh, foot on it, um, so let's have a look at that. These aren't torqued in yet. So you're going to have that metal foot or the aluminum foot. You've got your lag bolt through it. Then you put your piece of flashing on top and this guy seals the deal. Now you don't want to have, like I said, water running on this joint for nothing. So you want to cut away your composite so that it's um, doing that. So, so that's what all roofers do for any flashing work that gets done. Um, if you check any vent pipes that you have or any chimneys, um, you're always moving the flat, the, uh, the the composite so that the flashing is able to do its job, and it's not being hindered by a, an overlap of uh, of uh, roofing. Um, so this guy's going to come in here, and uh, once it's in place, then the uh, flashing is going to come and tuck underneath the shingle and go on top of the metal. So what I need to do first is clear out a little, at least enough room to be able to land this guy. Uh, and then, so I'm going to cut it out with a pair of shears, and then I'm going to dig my flashing under there to make sure it's got room to slide all the way underneath those shingles until the hole is uh, right on top of the hole that I want to use. Don't get confused between, you know, your missed ones and the ones that you're actually wanting to use. So I use the shears in order to cut underneath the shingles. So you cut underneath like that, and I went up over here and then over. And so these two pieces are throwaway now. Be careful on your roof. Don't leave these lying around where you're going to step. Uh, they're very slippery if you put your foot on it and you'll, you'll go down. Uh, you also want fall protection um, to make sure you're not uh, coming right off your roof. And um, so now I've got a clear area for that footing. And it's going to come in on top of that hole. Uh, and it's got room to lay flush on top of the uh, shingles. So every once in a while you get a hole and you might be slightly 
hanging off the edge. So that's okay, but if you get really too near it, you kind of fall into a, a position where it's wobbling too much and you have to cut away and go on the, the layer of shingles underneath. The lower you go in the layers of shingles, the more you're likely to encounter nails when you try to slide your flashing underneath here. So if you can avoid it, don't go too low uh, and stay on the top uh, surface of shingles. Uh, you run into less uh, hassle trying to get this guy underneath there, which is the next step. So the next step is to make sure that this guy can make it all the way up and underneath the shingles so that when the water is running over the roof, it's doing well. Um, with one hand, it's almost impossible, so I'll have to put my camera down again and try to get it in there. If you're hitting something, what's going to happen is you're going to dent you're going to dent the top of your flashing where you're hitting nails, like right here. Um, or when you slide it in, you'll, you'll kind of feel it twisting, and you'll see that it's, it feels like it's resting on a nail up there. Now, you can use a roofing bar. Looks like this. Oh, the roofing bar, basically you're using the flat edge here, you, you know, and what you're doing is sliding it underneath uh, without the flashing in place, and you can just lift the shingles a little bit. So if you look on Sun Moto's website, there's a nice professional guy who seems to do this real quick. Uh, I never seem to be able to do it that fast. Um, so right here, I know I've got a nail. I don't want to pull it up. Uh, it's sitting right at the end of my roofing bar, right about there, or just underneath probably the shingle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out of my flashing, I basically cut the corner off the flashing like this, so that I can get the nail in, in, in there. And I'm just gonna check with my roofing bar to see if I have any other nails to worry about. And there aren't. So I'm gonna get my flashing over here, use my tin snips, and basically cut the corner out. All right, now I've cut the corner off of my flashing. There's still plenty of it there, so it'll still give all that waterproofing. You want to make sure, do one last trial fit, make sure that you can see the hole that you want to mount to right through there. So you can see it right in there. And if you've got more than one, make sure you got on the right one. Uh, you should have your, um, your, your roof cut away from, from the flashing. Make sure it's straight, all that. So you want your test fit to be good at this point um, because once you start putting the mount in place, and you have um, uh, sealant there, uh, you, you don't want to have to be taking your flashing in and out and retrimming it and stuff. Um, so at this point, we're going to be ready to put some sealant in the hole. And um, so there's already a little bit on the end of the gun here. What we're doing is filling in the old hole. So. I'm putting enough in there to go right down into the hole and then some on top of the hole that I already that I want to use. Um, liberally apply this uh, roof, uh, this uh, caulking. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got enough up here that you're not going to run into water problems underneath your solar panels. So that's pretty interesting, pretty important. Uh, once you have it in place, you're going to need the lag bolt and the footing. Now you need the footing, the lag bolt in there, and then on your drill, you want to mount a, uh, a a hex head driver to basically use your drill in order to pull this right into the right into the roof. Remember that you're going on this one. In my case, I have that spare hole over here. Make sure I'm going to the right place. So this is the one I'm going to put in with the drill. All right, so now you've got the lag bolt in place with the footing, and I have the, my, the driver head on my drill, so I'm just able to put it in there. Now, you want to be able to feel the drill really pull in there. If, it, if you push the lag bolt all the way in and it just spins, uh, then you haven't hit the, um, the truss properly, and uh, you're just spinning through the sheathing. You have to back out, find that hole position properly, and make sure you're biting into wood. So you can feel the drill forcing at the end there. That's important. You can see you've got all sorts of um, 
good sealant in there so you're creating a nice sealed patch and right now because this is just all one piece of metal the only crack uh, you know where water could get in is way up here and you're gonna cover that completely with uh, this really deep socket that's gonna go on top of there but first we need to get the tuck the flashing in there uh, so this is a nice waterproof system uh, they've done well no complaints uh, so uh, we're I'm pretty happy with it and confident that I won't have any problems with it in the future uh, so at this point you just want to tuck this in there um, it's gonna be a two-handed job to get the flashing up on top here and uh, once I have it in place and I'm ready to go so there it is with the flashing in place and you can see I still have room for water to run off here on either side and then the last thing that goes on there is the um, standoff and you just put it in by hand for now and these get torqued uh, so I had to go get a, a, a proper socket size uh, for this and uh, I'll film it later with the torque wrench you have to torque these down and that creates the seal down in here um, and keeps things uh, keep things waterproof you can see that um, between my rail going from one end to the other I'm a little bit out so I got a little bit of a little bit of spare room here um, when you put the L bracket on top of here it, it goes here and then it goes up um, it does have a slot and you got about an inch to work with when you are um, trying to put your rail across the roof so you don't have to be as precise as you want uh, as uh, you know uh, to the to the eighth of an inch it's uh, it's fine plus or minus a half inch uh, you'll have no problem getting your rail up there so before finishing up the last row of panels we'll just have a look at what some of the rooftop equipment looks like so as you can see the rails are in place with an L bracket and along the top of them you have this is the first micro inverter this is from uh, APS and um, there's actually only two of these on this back rail where there are going to be four panels so it's actually two to one each of them are dual headed you have two DC inputs it's for one panel this is for the next and then they connect one to the other directly so there's no trunk cable like in the end phase system um, these are made in Washington just uh, not too far went to pick them up at the manufacturer this cable here is the ground so it goes right through and you can ground it there so you use that for the electronics ground they're also grounded through a weeb washer here uh, they're bonded that is down to the rails and that's for uh, equipment bonding and uh, you can see the wires go from uh, inverter to inverter and there's also a separate uh, wire to bond all the rails together as well at the end of the line of inverters there's a rooftop junction box this is what I've done here so it's just a standard two gang junction box waterproof cover and I got myself some long stainless steel bolts and they fit into the into the uh, groove for the railing and then there's a stainless steel plate at the end or galvanized plate actually at the end that clamps it in so when these tie down all of that's put in place I also left enough extra wiring so I went back and forth a few times so that when the panels are on top I can pull that box right out and up to the roof line and work on it without having to uh, try to do any work directly underneath the panels so there's enough of the um, of the conduit and enough of the wiring to pull the box out and work on it in case anything needs to be rewired